Shatteratcoach.com. A large capsule bag will have more wrinkles. And here's how I move the wrinkles out of the visual axis. Now, this patient's a very high myope. We're putting in a minus power three-piece lens here. So capsule bag is filled with viscoelastic here. Here comes the eye. Well, again, a three-piece lens. As we know, the leading haptic should come out like the number seven, the seven L rule. There's the seven. Here comes the optic. And then the trailing haptic like the capital letter L, 7L rule. And therefore, the overall configuration of the haptics is the anti-S. Remember, S is for stupid. The haptic should not look like the letter S. So now we'll get that lens delivered in the capsule bag here. We'll just dial it in. And you can see that's a thick lens because this is a meniscus design lens. It's different than the typical lens. If you don't know what that means, you better go to cataractcoach.com and look it up. So now I'm doing a little capsule polishing to clean up the capsule bag. It's a big bag. I want to be gentle here. This is a very large eye. Again, very long axial length. The patient's getting a minus power IOL. And again, we're aiming for a post-op goal of but between minus one and minus two. We're not aiming for Plano. Don't aim for Plano in these ultra-high myops. Now here, removing viscoelastic, and look what happens. As we remove the viscoelastic, that capsule bag is so big, you see some wrinkles in it. And you may be worried, like, oh, is the capsule bag broken there? Is it? No, it's not, it's just wrinkles. Now look at the orientation. They're in that direction because of the haptics. Haptics are pushing outwards against the capsule bag equator. And now you see right in the center there, we've got some wrinkles in the capsule bag. Now you could just leave it like this, let the patient heal up, let capsule contraction happen, and then come back in a couple of months, and if you still have wrinkles, do a YAG laser capsulotomy. Definitely you could do this. But is there another way? So I'm sealing up the incisions here, and look what I'm going to do. I'm going to push the wrinkles to the side of the optics, right there in the middle. We don't want them in the middle. We want them to the side. So if we scoot the optic over a little bit, we can make the wrinkles go more to the side. Even So I'll get the eye filled again, nice deep bag, and there you go. Now you've got any wrinkles or laxity on the side there. Look at the top of the haptic optic junction. Still a little bit more wrinkles. You can still inflate the eye a little bit more. Let me show you again, and we'll push those wrinkles out and then keep the eye inflated at the end. Now, let's see the wrinkles now that are the inferior haptic optic junction. And now when you fill the bag up, you're going to have a lot less of those. There we go. And then this will tend to stick in place. Now we're pretty happy. Again, most of the wrinkles are out. You can go on to the next case. Let me show you the next one. Now, this is a patient who's also highly myopic in a big eye, big capsule bag. The eye's full of viscoelastic now. We took the cataract out. We're polishing up the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim there, a little capsule polishing. Again, being very gentle about it here. Now, this patient has, again, a low dioptric power, but this time it's still a plus power, and the lens is not a meniscus design. It's a regular design. So this three-piece lens here, and we'll inject it into the eye. Actually, it's a one-piece lens, forgive me. As this one-piece lens goes in the eye here, you'll see it's a lot easier to get into position because you don't have that extreme outward force of the haptics from the three-piece lens. As one-piece lens, it's a lot more forgiving, so it's not going to put as much outward pushing pressure on the capsule bag equator. So we'll get that open up there. There is a little bit of sub-incisional cortex, which is what I'm doing there. I'm kind of using that haptic-optic junction to kind of rub that sub-incisional cortex to loosen it up. So now when I get the IA probe in the eye, I can aspirate that out pretty easily. But you see, in this one, let's remove viscoelastic. I'll get that little bit of cortex out. There it is. Always easier to get this out with the IOL in the eye because, again, the IOL can loosen it as you move it around. But also, the IOL acts as a barrier, keeps that posterior capsule at bay, keeps it away as you go and remove that last bit of lens cortical material. Now, taking out the viscoelastic from behind the optic in the capsule bag, get all that out. We're also cleaning up the posterior capsule a little bit more. Again, you want to be really delicate here, right? The posterior capsule is four microns. That's about half the thickness of a red cell. And so there we go. Take that out. And now let's seal up the incision here. No, maybe a little bit more. There's a little bit more smuts or uh, material right there on the posterior capsule. So that sticky stuff, we'll get that off right there. And then now, now it looks pretty darn good. Now you see some vitreous opacity, some floaters there. The patient's going to obviously notice those, but those are pre-existing. We didn't put those there. Now sealing up the incision, and you see there are no wrinkles, even though this patient has a big caps or bag. So you'll get the wrinkles in the bag, commonly in the very large myopic eyes, where you're putting in a three-piece lens in the bag. And again, those are those meniscus design uh, lenses when you have these ultra-low or zero power, or even negative power IOLs. And then you can push the optic around a little bit to put the wrinkles on the side. But in this case, with a single-piece lens, it's a lot easier. Thanks for watching.